What's up guys, it's your boy MMA Striker here with a new video today. Now today we are back with another episode of Monday MMA News Series. And before we get into the actual news, I do have a few announcements. First things first, I want to apologize for not being as active on YouTube last week. I only uploaded two videos and one of those videos is only like a minute long, pretty much revealing the event mode card that I do for my event mode series every Friday. So I just want to apologize for not being as active last week because it was pretty busy last week so yeah I'm gonna try to be more active this week and the second announcement is I just started school today so my uploading schedule may change in the future I don't know yet but if it does I will let you guys know um, I'm probably I might not be able to upload three videos a week like I was in the summertime but like I said if it does change I will let you guys know make sure to follow me on Twitter I will leave my Twitter in the description below so where I post all my like, video announcements or when which video I'm going to do next. So, and also I have two Q, two questions that fans ask me on Twitter. And I will answer those at the end of the video. Like I said, if you want to answer send questions for this series, make sure to um, DM me on Twitter or you can leave it under any of my Twitter posts, and I will shout you out and answer the question at the end of the video. But let's get right into the news. And we're going to start by recapping this past weekend's card, Smith vs. Rockage, which was a pretty good card. Not too many finishes. It was a lot of decisions, but there were some great performances on this card. And I want to start with the main event, Smith vs. Rockage. And Alexander Rockage made a name for himself and pretty much dominated Anthony Smith in every aspect of the fight, whether it was striking and grappling. He dropped Smith early in the fight with a leg kick. And that just shows how much power he can generate from his kicks. Of course, we know that knockout reel head kick that he landed on Jimmy Manoa about a year ago. And he can he has some powerful kicks. And they showed in this fight as well. And But the shocking part about this fight was Rockage grappling. Now, grappling. Now, the narrative going into this fight was Smith would have the grappling advantage. But that was not the case. Grapp I mean, Rockage out grappled Smith. For 12 minutes of the fight, which was a three-round fight, so 12 minutes out of the 15-minute fight, he was out grappling Smith, which was very shocking. He pretty much showed it. I mean, he, he can do it all. Now, will he be able to out grapple with a top rank light heavyweight? We're gonna have to wait and find out. But he's becoming a, a contender now in this division. He's no longer a prospect. Most likely gonna be ranked top five once they update the rankings. And I will get into who they should fight next at the end of the video because that is one of the questions. So, great performance by Rocky. Edge. Can't wait to see him fight next. And the co main event, Robbie Lawler versus Neil Magny. Neil Magny pretty much dominated as well. Um, Robbie Lawler, I don't, he didn't, he just doesn't have that killer instinct. He doesn't look like, he, he just, he doesn't throw much in, output in the fights now. He doesn't really do much in the, his last two fights, he didn't really do much. He didn't really put that much output. He didn't really, wasn't really aggressive, wasn't trying to finish the fight at all. I don't know if it's damage, if he's washed up, if he's, I don't know what it is, but he just doesn't look the same compared to when he was fighting Condent, McDonald, Hendrick. He just doesn't look the same. Maybe it's age. I think it's a mixture of age and um, damage. I think his body's taking a lot of damage, especially in those wars with Carlos Condent and Roy McDonald in those two fights with Johnny Hendricks. I think those fights took a toll, finally took a toll on his body, and it's kind of showing in his in his recent fights. Neil Magny pretty much dominated everywhere. Lawler just shot a takedown in the first round, which I didn't really understand why he did that. I thought maybe he was trying to prove a point, but I watched the Weasels breakdown, and, and his reasoning was that he was trying to uh, exploit the quote-unquote BJJ weakness of Neil Magny, but I don't know why Lawler did it. It wasn't the smartest thing to do, but... When the fight was on the feet, Neil Magny pretty much kept his range, but he's picking Lawler apart at range with the kicks and the jab. So he Lawler pretty much had nothing left, nothing for Neil Magny. Uh, I think Matt, I think Lawler should retire to be honest. I mean, I don't want to see him fighting past like I think he's past his prime now, but I don't want to see him keep fighting and getting dominated. And hopefully, he doesn't get to the point where he's getting knocked out and starched. So I hope he retires. <clears throat> and for Neil Magny, uh, kind of tough was next for him. Maybe Damian Maya, but I don't know. I mean, let's look at the rankings really quickly. I would say Jeff Neil, but Jeff Neil is probably going to be out for a while because that tragic that happened to him. So 
he's he probably gonna be out for a while. So let's look. Okay, Vicente Luque will be a great fight. Yeah, that'll be a great fight. You do that, we can they can make that fight. Vicente Luque versus Neil Magny will be a fun one. So yeah, that should be the fight next for Neil Magny. And moving on to the next topic, I want to talk about this upcoming week's card, which is Alistair Overeem versus Augusto Sakai. And looking at the card on paper, it doesn't really look that appealing. But like I say all the time, you can't really judge a card based off of name value or on paper. You have to really wait till they actually play out. So we're going to see on Saturday. I want to talk about the main event for a little bit. Um, on paper, Overeem should win this fight. He's a much more skilled fighter. Um, I have to, I'm gonna have to go back and watch a little bit more tape on Sakai. I watched his last fight. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing too impressive. But I'm gonna go back probably later on today or tomorrow and go watch some more fight film on him, study his game a little bit more. But on paper, Overeem should win this fight. But the thing about Overeem in almost every fight is his chin. Yeah, it doesn't take much to drop him or hurt him or even put him away. So Overeem is gonna really have to keep his hands up in this fight. And if, Sak if Sakai can crack him once or twice, I think he's going to either rock over him or put him down. So, but I'll save my prediction video. I'll save the prediction for that prediction video, which I know I haven't done one in a long time. But I'm going to make sure I do one this weekend. So, I'll talk more about the main event for that fight in the prediction video. And I also wanted to talk about something that kind of recently just happened today. I was watching Ariel Helwani and DC show on YouTube, and Ariel asked him a question. He said, Which, who should Stipe fight next? Should it be John Jones or Nganu? And DC said something very interesting. He said, if Stipe fights Nganu like in like the end of the year or early next year, he thinks Stipe is going to get knocked out because Stipe took a lot of damage in their fight with DC in the trilogy, and he thinks that... If Stipe fights like in December or January or February, he think he doesn't think he's gonna his chin or his head or his body is not gonna be fully recovered enough to take the punches of Francis and Gano. And he also said, and when him and Francis, when Stipe and Francis fought the first time, Stipe was able to eat a lot of Francis's shots, pretty much all his shots. But when he fought DC in the first fight, he put him down in one punch, which is kind of true to an extent. I guess I see where he's coming from, but. I don't totally totally agree. I don't think that's going to really decide the fight, but I do see where he's coming from. And the reference that he used was pretty legit. Do I think that's going to really play a factor? It could, but I don't think that's going to really determine who wins the fight. I think if Stipe can use his head movement, his footwork, I really think he could invade a lot of the shots from Francis. But we'll see how the fight plays out. Right now... Predicting wise, I'm still gonna go Stipe Miocic by decision again. I think it will be a little bit more closer depending on how Francis fights. If Francis can fight patient, patient, it's gonna be a really tough fight for Stipe, even tougher than the first fight. But if Francis tries to blitz him again like he did in the first fight, I just see Stipe using his head movement, bobbing and weaving, getting out of the in and out, using the footwork, and winning the decision again. Probably using his wrestling. But if Francis Francis fight patiently, then. I see a much more competitive fight, but that's going to be a great fight. I can't wait for it. Um, and yeah, so we're going to get to the question, two questions I got from the fans. First question, it comes from J at James Sells. Shout out to him once again. He sent the question in the Q&A video, so shout out to him for sending the questions. And he says, after Anthony Smith's loss to Rockage, where does he go from here? Three losses from his last four bouts. Yeah, he's lost quite a few quite um, quite much <clears throat> now lately and what's next for him okay so I'm pretty much just gonna uh pretty much just gonna lay out how I would match and make the rest of the light the top 10 of the light heavyweight division so the top the top four ranked contenders are already booked S um Santos and Glover are booked Reyes and Yan are booked so now it comes down to the five and ten so here's what I would do I would have Rockage fight Jerry uh, I can't pronounce his last name right right now. I'm going to have to work on that. But Jerry, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I would do Rockage versus Jerry. And then I would have Anthony Smith fight Misha Serkinov. Which I think that would be a great fight for him. I wouldn't. I think he should be fighting like a lesser competition now since he has been getting dominated lately. So I would do Smith versus Serkinov. And I would do Vulcan Uzdemir versus Nikita Krylov. I, be like, I believe that would be a great fight, especially for Krylov. Wins that fight, he cl 
climb up the rankings as well. So that's what I would do matchmaking wise for the light heavyweight division. And move on to the next question from Justin Dempsey Jr. If you guys don't know who he is, I did do a collab with him for UFC 3. It's on my channel. Justin Jr. 962. Shout out to him. And his question is, what is your favorite weight class and why? So my favorite weight class right now is 145. And why? 145, in my opinion, is the most stacked division right now in the UFC. I know you have other divisions which are really stacked, like bantamweight, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight. But in my opinion, 145 stands out the most. You got, I mean, it's so stacked all the way down to the unranked. You have guys like, of course, you have Volkanovski, you have Holloway, you have Ortega, Korean Zombie, Zabit, Yair, Calvin Cater, Josh Emmett, Shane Burgos, Dan Ige. And you have Sadiq Youssef, who's lower ranked. You have Bryce, Bryce, Bryce Mitchell, who's a prospect. You have Andre Feely. And we have a lot of guys in that division who can be champions and top ring contenders. So that's why 145, in my opinion, is the best division and is the most stacked. And it's personally my favorite. But anyways, that is going to wrap up today's video, guys. Make sure to comment down below your thoughts on everything I discussed today. And make sure to subscribe and like if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have